Hello again. I hope you are doing so, so well. Um, and so today, let's look at this essential question. Um, how can definite integrals be applied to problems involving absolute extrema? So we're going to get around to that idea um, today. In the past, we've talked about absolute extrema, but we've used it, we've used derivatives or differentiation techniques to find them. Today we're going to show you how you can use definite integrals to find absolute extrema. Um, in order to do that though, we're going to, we're going to look at an old free response question, specifically from 2005, question number two, which is a calculator problem. We're going to work through this whole question, although the big idea for today doesn't, well, kind of comes in in, in later parts. Alright, so I'm going to read the problem. It says that the tide removes sand from Sandy Point Beach at a rate modeled by the function r given by that r of t function right there. A pumping station adds sand to the beach at a rate modeled by the function s given by that s of t function. So we have the rate at which sand is being removed, which is r of t, and the rate at which sand is being added which is s of t. Both r of t and s of t have units of cubic yards per hour, and t is measured in hours from 0 to 6. At time t equals 0, the beach contains 2,500 cubic yards of sand. Question A says, how much sand will the tide remove, just remove, from the beach during the 6-hour period? Indicate units of measure. So this first one is just asking how much um, sand is being removed from zero to six hours. So R of t, this function right here, R of t, is the rate at which the sand is being removed. We want to talk about the quantity that has been removed. So we need to um, integrate R of t. So we are going to take the definite integral from zero to six of R of t, dt. Now you could write the actual equation there, uh, 2 plus 5 sine of 4 pi t over 25. Um, or you could just write r of t since that is its name. And you're going to type that in on your calculator. Um, and I believe you should get 31.815 or 6. I don't know if it rounds up or down, but doesn't actually matter that much. Um, that's what you should get when you integrate this r of t function on the interval from 0 to 6. And that represents how much sand has been removed in the first 6 hour period. Uh, but it also asks us to indicate units of measure. So we have just integrated r of t, and r of t is uh, cubic yards per hour. So if we integrate it, we're kind of getting rid of that per hour, that rate feature, and we're just getting an amount which is in cubic yards. So that is our answer. Moving on to part B. Um, same question, part B says, write an expression for y of t, the total number of cubic yards of sand on the beach at time t. So we want, an expression for y of t, which is the amount of sand on the beach, like it says. Um, but we're not given equations that are amounts, we're given equations that are rates. And so before we think about y of t, it's probably actually better to think about y prime of t and what it equals. Still calling this r of t. This is s of t. And so when we're looking for the y prime of t, y prime of t is the overall rate of change in the amount of sand on the beach. Like we've seen before, that's really just the rate coming in uh, minus the rate going out. So the rate coming in is going to be um, s of t. That's the rate at which it is being added. And we are going to subtract the rate at which it is being removed from the beach, which is r of t. Now that's, that's y prime. That's an expression for y prime. We, however, want an expression for y of t. 
And you might say, oh, well, let's just integrate y prime. Let's just take the integral of s of t minus r of t. And that is partially correct. If we just integrate y prime, we're going to get part of y of t. But what we're really going to get is how much the, the amount of sand on the beach has changed over that time period, or whatever time period we're talking about. So we need to not just consider how much it's changed, but also the initial amount of sand, which is this 2,500 cubic yards of sand. So when we write an expression for y of t, it's going to be the initial amount, 2,500, plus the change in amount. And the change in amount is going to be the integral, starting from 0, but we're not going to 6, okay? Because y of t doesn't want how much sand there is on, on the beach after six hours, it wants it for any time. So we're gonna integrate starting from zero, but to go to any time t. So it could be zero to six, but this is more general. This is from zero to whatever time we want to stop counting. Now we're actually gonna write um, what we had previously written as y prime, which is s of t, but now we're not gonna write t, we're gonna write s of x. It's a small technicality, but it matters. Because we've already used the t right here, right there, uh, we don't want to write it again. Kind of writing like a, an accumulation function. We don't want to use the same variable twice. Um, so s of x minus r of x uh, dx. Now hopefully you're seeing that this is really just um, our kind of flipped version of the fundamental theorem of calculus, f of b equals f of a plus the integral from a to b of f prime of x dx. So our b is like t, our a is like, well, it's actually, uh, sorry, our a is actually zero. Our a is really zero, and f of zero is 2,500, so that's how we got the 2,500. Um, so then we go a to b, that'd be 0 to t, and f prime is our y prime, which is s of x minus r of x. And that is an expression for y of t. The initial amount, the initial amount of sand plus the change in the amount of sand over time. All right. That's a big idea. That's going to help us when we start talking about absolute extreme. We'll get, come, come back to that idea in just a bit.